Hi, welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer your questions on oil painting. So if you have a question and you want it answered, leave that question in the comment section below and I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about learning oil painting from home. You know, maybe you don't have the financial means or the access to an in-person class and you, you, know, you don't have access to in-person workshops. I know that's probably a lot of people right now in 2020 with lockdowns and all that stuff so i thought i'd give you know the best advice that i have for learning to oil paint on your own because honestly that's how i learned most of oil painting a lot of it was just me at home figuring it out and i feel like i learned some things that i could share with you all right the first thing i want to talk about is probably the most important thing is your mindset going into this i feel like a lot of people go into it with the wrong mindset but if you go into it with the right mindset it's going to make things a lot better it's going to make you want to practice a lot more so the first thing you probably heard me say this before is honor the effort and that means don't get discouraged when you make a bad painting because the truth is you're going to make bad paintings you're going to make a lot of bad paintings hopefully you do make a lot of bad paintings because that means that you're trying to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and get better Better. but you have to honor the fact that you sat down or stood up and painted today and that is a win no matter how the painting turns out trust me you got better if you keep doing that if you keep showing up every single day those bad paintings are going to become less and less frequent but they're never going to go away i make bad paintings all the time i don't throw them away i keep them in a stack in my studio as a little reminder of the work that i've gone through to get to where i am and so when i do make another bad painting in the future i can remember you know this is how i got here i got here by making bad paintings i always say you got to get through the bad paintings to get to the good ones so don't get discouraged when you make a bad painting just identify what you did wrong and how you can fix it on the next painting another thing dealing with your mindset is don't paint for the end product i know this is going to seem weird and kind of hard to understand it's like well chris i'm sitting down to paint and i want to make a great painting so you know i am painting to get a good painting yes you are but i always say don't fall in love with the end product fall in love with the process the thing you should like the most is actually sitting down and painting you know i'm not saying that you don't enjoy having a good painting and i mean everybody enjoys when you're done to have a great painting and you show it and everybody says wow that's a great painting blah 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 people like that but it should be a very distant second in terms of what you enjoy the number one thing you should enjoy is the fact that you sat down and paint like i've never extremely excited when i finish a painting because i'm honestly already thinking about my next painting and i'm always certain that my best painting is always going to be my next painting i see this a lot with beginner painters they do a good painting they feel like it was like a fluke or something or that you know oh my god i got so lucky that i made this great painting it's like no don't think like that always think that your next painting is always going to be your better painting it might not always be true but you should always think that way all right now let's talk about uh setup and and fumes because honestly that i feel like is the biggest barrier people first come across when they want to dive into oil paints maybe they've done watercolors and acrylics and you don't have to really worry about smells and fumes but with oils you do so let's talk about that now first off i'm gonna say i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist uh, I'm just speaking from firsthand experience. I, I recommend reading the warning labels on any of the stuff that you buy. I'm just a guy who paints and this is my opinion. The thing you have to worry about the most in terms of fumes is the paint thinner. The oil paints themselves don't really give off fumes. Uh, yeah, there are certain colors because they're made from certain materials like cadmium that you know aren't the best to get a large amounts in your skin. But honestly, the painting companies these days have gotten so good at making these uh, paints non-toxic as possible that the main thing I feel like you have to worry about is your paint thinner that's why I always buy an odorless paint thinner you know you might also see it as like odorless mineral spirits uh, yes you can go and buy like a big jug of it for really cheap like turpentine at Home Depot but honestly that's probably not the best for uh, fumes you know with an indoor studio I always recommend Gamsol uh, it is apparently it is the most studio friendly paint thinner it is still uh, toxic and still has some toxic fumes uh, so if you do use it I highly recommend finding a way to circulate the air in your studio this might mean setting up a couple fans to blow the bad air out and blow in good air I also recommend if you can't afford it getting a air purifier like an air filter I bought one of those and I use it as well uh, if you have a window if you can figure out a way to get air coming through the window and bad air going out the window uh, if you can 
figure out a way to get a ventilation system. That is great. I understand a lot of people are in small spaces. You're in small apartments. You don't have room and ventilation is a, an issue. I know that I painted in my room in a small apartment with uh, two other roommates and I had to paint in my tiny little room right next to my bed. It was probably not the best idea in terms of fumes, which is why I moved my painting setup out onto a balcony that was like an eight foot by three foot balcony, which was not ideal, but I found a way to paint. Now, if you don't want to deal with the fumes at all, you can use water mixable oil paints. I've made a, a few videos on water mixable oil paints. I'll put one of them linked above right here. But with water mixable oil paints, you don't need paint thinner. Uh, they have water mixable paint thinner that is non-toxic that you can use, but I just use the water. They do also have water mixable uh, mediums, like water mixable linseed oil, water mixable, uh, you know, whatever it is that you want, they seem to have it. And honestly, when I first used water mixable oils, I went into it thinking that they were not gonna be anything near regular oil paints, but I actually was surprised that they are actually pretty close there's also chelsea studios painting materials they have a lot of non-toxic stuff they have uh non-toxic paint thinner uh i've used it it's a little more expensive um so that's always a route that you can go to i have links in the description below to where you can buy all this stuff okay let's talk about what you should paint uh, the truth is you should paint whatever inspires you if, if we're talking just about practice don't be worrying about copyright and all that stuff using copyright image and stuff as long as you're not gonna try and sell it or whatever like you're just practicing don't worry about that paint whatever inspires you the name of the game is to get as many practice reps as possible so whatever you have to do to get yourself excited to paint do that this could mean copying other paintings i did this a lot when i first started painting you know copying other people's paintings can give you a feel for painting in a certain style that you like you can also do master copies again the main thing is practice as much as possible and that means copying other people's work copy other people's work just don't try and pawn it off as your own and sell it also don't think that you need to stick to one subject i get people thinking like oh should i just focus just on portraits and get really good at portraits uh no i think you should paint whatever you want if you if that again the name of the game is paint as much as possible and if painting only portraits is the way that you're going to want to paint every single day then do that uh but if you like to bounce around if you're like oh i feel like painting this one day and this the other day and this the other day that is perfectly fine honestly i probably think that is better uh, because you're going to learn different things from painting different things and you'll be able to take things that you learn from painting portraits and apply it to landscapes same with landscapes to portraits and still lifes and so on and i think it's very important for people to bounce around because one it keeps you from getting bored you always got fresh new material it's uh fresh new problems that you're gonna have to solve and it's just gonna make you a well-rounded painter now, I'm also going to say, don't get so caught up in what you're painting. Get caught up in how you're painting. This is very important, I feel like, for practicing. If you get too caught up in, in what you're painting and feeling you need some connection to the material that you're painting and, 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 and meaning and all that, like that stuff's great and, and fine if you want to do that for paintings, but I'm talking strictly practice here. If you can get excited to paint because of how you're painting and it's going to open up the range of what you find interesting to paint so much you know be interested in how light and shadows are working you know how uh, different value shifts like like enjoy that kind of stuff because you can find that anywhere you can find that in landscapes portraits still lifes so be more concerned with how you're painting opposed to what you're painting all right should you paint from life or photos the answer is if you can paint from life, paint from life. It's better, you're gonna get better at seeing colors, better at seeing values. There's just better information. It's a better process of observing a subject when you're doing it from life opposed to a photograph. Because with a photograph, you're dealing with other factors out of your control, like what kind of camera was it shot with? What are the colors being adjusted because it's caught with 
that kind of camera if you're printing it out how did the printer print it out opposed to another printer there's so many different things and, and photos just can't capture what you can see in life general rule of thumb photos the darks are going to be darker and the lights are going to be lighter it's just going to be a higher contrast in general it's going to be harder to see things that are in the shadows so paint from life is the best now i understand you can't always paint from life it's very you know difficult you have to set up a still life you have to get a person to come and sit for you if you want to do a portrait you have to go out and play an air paint if you want to do a landscape like i understand that's very difficult so don't feel bad if you're painting from photos i paint a lot from photos i probably paint most of my stuff from photos it's not bad again the name of the game is paint as much as possible and i much rather you paint five days a week from a photograph than one day a week from real life you're going to get a lot better it's all about reps 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 you got to get those reps in of paint from photographs is going to give you more reps than paint from photographs now also remember it is easier to be creative when you have limitations so if you're sitting there and you're like oh well i could paint anything i could paint a landscape i could paint a portrait i could paint a still life a lot of people myself included will just freeze up because there's just so many options to paint so find ways to limit your options you know if you have to make a schedule if you have to say all right well this week i'm going to paint a landscape next week i'll paint a portrait the week after that i'll paint whatever if you have to sign up for a painting course where you're told what to paint or get an instructor that's great too just always find something to paint you don't have to be fully inspired by it sometimes you just have to sit down and paint when you don't want to and the days that you sit down and paint when you don't really want to are the days you get better because most people aren't going to do that and most people aren't going to be that great at painting so if you can do that if you can have a, a schedule and and force yourself to paint even when you don't feel like it, that's how you're gonna get better. All right, let's talk about getting instruction. There's a lot of people out there, myself included, that give instruction with oil painting. And what I suggest is no matter who you pick, stick with that person for at least a year. A big trap that a lot of people fall into that I fell into when I was first starting to learn plein air painting is trying to learn from too many different people at once. I'd bounce from this person to that person, think, oh, I need to use the brushes from this person. Oh, I like how this person painted that. I gotta go try and paint like that. And I just kept spinning my wheels because I didn't stick with one way of painting long enough to understand what I'm doing. You know, there's a bunch of different ways to go about oil painting and they're all good. Like none of them, there's no like wrong or right way to oil paint. It's just what you like, what style you like, how your brain works and processes stuff. But I believe that there are some very basic core elements of oil painting that all good methods share. And the only way to get to those and understand those and get a hold of them is to stick with the process, whatever process it may be long enough. And once you get the feel that you kind of know what you're doing a little bit, then you can start branching off and experimenting with other different methods. Now there are a lot of instructors out there with a lot of online content. I myself have a Patreon page. I got full painting video tutorials there. I kind of think of it as like a gym for you to come and practice what you learn. Uh, I have a foundations of oil painting course coming out at the beginning of the year where I walk you from the basics of materials through a still life, through a landscape, through a portrait, through a series of lectures exercise and paint alongs and i'll put a link below to where you can sign up for my patreon if that's something you're interested in. but honestly like i'm not saying just sign up for mine like whoever it is out there that you like find a painter that you like their style you like how they paint uh, it makes sense to you and take whatever courses or videos they have that's what i did when i wanted to learn how to plain air paint i just did it with too many uh instructors at once but it th it is worth it like video tutorials are worth it now my patrons also have access to a private facebook group just for them and this brings me to my next point with learning painting from home which is try the best you can to get involved in some sort of painting community uh this could be going to a figure drawing class once a week if you can find them uh you know posting on instagram you know communicating with other artists asking for feedback uh in the patreon facebook group people are posting there multiple times a day there's a couple hundred people in there 
it's great because people post, people get feedback, people ask questions, people will be in the middle of a painting and not know what to do. They'll post it there and get feedback from people. Like it's so important to get feedback, get fresh eyes on your painting and just communicate with people. You know, talk to people that are trying to do the same thing that you're doing, that are coming across the same problems that you are. You know, you'll be able to share what you've discovered and what you've learned with each other and everybody will get better. Now, last thing I'm gonna talk about is don't forget why painting is important. I know it's very easy to get caught up. Everybody has lives, everybody's got jobs, this or that. It's easy just to say in your mind, ah, oh, I can't paint today, I don't have time, it's not important. The thing though is it is important. You know, this is you creating something with your hands. And I feel like today there just aren't many opportunities for people to do that. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are unhappy and unsatisfied because they don't get that immediate satisfaction of creating something you know actually putting in work and having something physical to show for your work and it's also you're practicing at getting better at something you're also practicing at solving problems each painting is just a new series of problems that you need to figure out and you practicing getting better at something and practicing solving problems is going to translate into many other aspects of your life i can't tell you how many times i've come across problems in my life and have been able to relate it to painting in some way to be able to understand it or fix it or solve it. You know, there's so much technology these days. You're looking at a phone with videos and pictures just blasting at you all day long. You look at the TV, it's the same thing everywhere you go. And this is a good opportunity just to sit down and just focus on one thing. Like, you're, like if you think about it, it's pretty cool. Like you're sitting and you're just studying something for hours. You're studying the random object. It could be a still life. You're just looking at that still life and just understanding how the light is working on it. You could be looking at a landscape and you're just sitting there looking, understanding how light is working. You're looking at a person and understanding like how a person's face works. Trust me, like once you paint enough portraits, you'll like never look at people and say like, whenever I look at somebody, I'm just thinking about planes and shapes and angles and how the light is hitting this plane and that plane. But it's just a good way to slow things down, focus on one thing. Some could say it's a good form of meditation. I know that I get a lot grumpier when I go more than a couple days without painting. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. Uh, if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at fours of 43. Uh, if you're interested in my foundations of oil painting course uh, that I plan on releasing at the beginning of the year, if you don't wanna miss out for when I release that, you should sign up for the Paint Coach newsletter. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can do that. I am Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Hey, look at you making it all the way to the end of the video. That must mean you like it. May I suggest then hitting that subscribe button? Also, you'll probably like this video as well.